Hello, my dears. I hope you're all doing well today. So, as you know, if you subscribe to my channel, the main focuses of my channel are music and makeup. And I have plenty of makeup tutorials on here, so I thought doing the music tag would be appropriate, just so that way you could get an idea of what I listen to on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a tag that I've seen a few people do, but I was ultimately inspired by Rachel Shade. Love you, girl! I watched her video and I thought, hey, that sounds like a good idea to me. Here I am. In order to keep things a little doocy goosey tonight, got a little liquid courage to uh, lubricate my... I don't know, but it's gonna be lubricating some. Question number one. What band slash artist do you own the most albums by? Well, let me tell you something. I stopped collecting CDs in high school simply because it's an obsolete format. You know, I listen to everything on my phone or an MP3 player now. And then I plug it in with an auxiliary cord into a speaker. It entirely cuts out the middleman. Because my car has a CD player, so I still, if I go to a thrift store and I find something that, that you know, piques my interest, I'll pick it up. I like to have listening material in the car. I'd rather listen to a CD than waste my data on the phone. You know what I mean? With that being said, these albums were purchased either when I was in high school or before that time period, so let's just uh, remind ourselves of that fact real quick here. The bands that I own the most albums by are probably Depeche Mode, The Cure, Him, as in His Infernal Majesty, <laughs> and a Korean artist by the name of Boa, or Kwan Boa. Little known fact. I used to be very, very much into Asian pop and R&B. I mean, I still like it, but I don't actively seek out those bands anymore. I basically just listen to the stuff that I used to listen to when I was in elementary school and junior high. My knowledge of K-pop and J-pop doesn't really extend past, say, like, 2007 or so. Question number two. What was the last song you listened to? Let's look at my YouTube history. The last song I listened to was The Dark Half by Aesthetic Perfection. Number three. What is in your CD player right now? Like I said, my only CD player is in my car. I only keep about 10 albums in my car at a time and I kind of rotate them out uh, just so that way I'm not listening to the same fucking album for like three months straight. The album that is currently in my car is Live Through This by Hole. is one of my favorite albums of all time. Number four, what was the last show you attended? Well, I actually just came from a show right now and I figured may as well make a video since I'm all done up, so. I saw a band called Sisters of the Black Moon. They are a local band from Los Angeles. They are like a, a doom stoner metal type of band, female fronted. We are very good friends with the entire band. Every single time they've played for the past year, we've seen them except for three times, and that was because either Either me or my partner was sick or, you know, some other event was going on at the same time, but every other time we make it out to see them because they, they're a fucking incredible band and they're awesome people to boot. Just makes it that much easier to love them. I don't know why my camera is just totally washing out my nose right now. I feel like every time I back up from the camera a little bit, my nose just completely vanishes. I promise, my nose is there. Just to use your imagination. Number five. What was the greatest show you've ever been to? 
It's super hard because I've I've literally been to I I would venture to say hundreds of of shows at this point in my life. <laughs> And I only intend on that number growing. Oh man. <laughs> I actually have a few favorite shows that I can think of. When I was 11, I saw Elton John in concert. Uh, he is one of my favorite artists of all time. Elton John was my first favorite artist. When I was a kid, I was absolutely obsessed with The Lion King. Elton John did a few songs for The Lion King. As a small child, I was just like, who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is this singing right now? I must know. He's been my favorite ever since. And then when I was 13, I saw Depeche Mode, and that was an incredible concert. It was at the Staples Center, so it's a really big venue and so there's literally thousands of people there and it's like tiered stadium seating you know what i mean you could look out on the crowd and just see pockets and groups of people just dancing along just dancing their fucking hearts out just everybody was fucking loving life for me there's no greater feeling than being in the company of others who love a particular band or a particular song as much as you do. You just look over at someone and you're just like, yeah, we're on the same wavelength right now. You know exactly what that person is feeling. You know because you, you feel it coursing through your own veins. The feeling is infectious. If you look over and someone is just belting it out to the world, you're just like, all right. It's amazing how how much music affects people. You know what I mean? Number six, what was the worst show you've been to? Unfortunately, this is a pretty easy answer for me. When I was, I believe I was like 17 or 18, I went to, I don't know if y'all are familiar with a record company called Burger Records. It's a local record label uh, to me in Southern California. They have a festival every year called Burgerama where they invite a bunch of bands that play on their label and some that don't, but you know, most of them do uh, to play this festival basically. And during this time, I was really into the bands on their label. So me and my, one of my best friends went and we were so excited to go. We were looking forward to this for months and months. And then we finally get there and I'm gonna level with you. A common thing that happens at concerts and clubs and whatnot, people will pregame in the car. So that means they'll drink or consume other intoxicants in their car and then they'll go inside to whatever event they're attending, you know what I mean? My friends and I, we were doing that. <laughs> we were getting passed by by groups of people and they were all just looking at us like... Oh my god, what are they doing? Do you see what's happening over there? Oh my god, this is so disgusting. Like, think about your liver, am I right? The pollutants produced by the thousands of cars operating around me every day totally don't bother me, but oh my god, your cigarette and weed smoke just has to go. And to that, I have to say, get over yourself, bitch. We all have our vices. But other than that, like, during the actual show itself, I felt like it was 2040, and someone made a movie about the time period of the early 2000s. Everyone, like, it was just so hipster. <laughs> and I know that sounds douchey, but it was just like, Everyone was dressed so perfectly, and everyone constantly looked as if they were posing for a picture. Oh no, I just decided to toss my hair at that exact moment. 
It was just so ridiculous. Everyone just seemed so superficial and so judgmental. I was like, I gotta fucking distance myself from this shit. If I thought that this place was judgmental, okay, I'm a goth. I'm a part of one of the most judgmental scenes that there fucking is. And if I'm telling you that your scene is judgmental, um, you got some fucking issues, dude. Number seven. What is the most musically involved you've ever been? I was in band from fourth grade to eighth grade. I played the flute and I was almost up upgraded to piccolo, but I didn't stay in quite, quite long enough uh, to get to that point. Unfortunately, my grandfather uh, got cancer when I was in junior high. My dad and I were pretty much his sole caretakers. When he has doctor's appointments every day after school, I wasn't able to go to band practice because basically my dad wouldn't have been able to pick me up in time because he would still be at the doctor's office with my papa. So it just wasn't feasible for me anymore. Unfortunately, even though I wanted to continue with it and I really loved it, especially like once I got into junior high, we started marching, you know, so I was part of the marching band and I fucking loved that. But you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Other than that, I started playing the piano when I was 12 and continued lessons until I was about 15 or so. I haven't taken any formal lessons since then, but I am currently in a band. The band is called RASH, all caps, R-A-S-H, and I am the keyboardist and backing vocalist. We played one like backyard show so far, but we haven't played at a venue yet. Uh, but when we do play at a venue, I will absolutely let you guys know, so that way, if you are in the SoCal area, hopefully you can make it out to our show, because that would be super rad, and I would appreciate it so much, you have no idea. <laughs> Number eight. Currently, I'm looking forward to, there is a Clan of Zymox show that's going to be happening in late August in LA and I'm really stoked about that. I've seen Clan of Zymox once before uh, last year, around the same time last year actually. They're fucking great live so I'm very excited to see them again. After that the next thing that I'm excited for is DOS Bunker's 20th anniversary festival. It's going to be taking place in October and I'm just reading the lineup for this and I'm like, oh, fuck, dude! Let me just read off this fucking roster for you. Friday night is a dance night, which is the regular DJs and stuff. And then Saturday, I, I am very aware of this band. I just don't know how to pronounce the name. A pop digma? 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 A and then Aesthetic Perfection and Tactical Sect. There are many other bands playing, but those are the only names that I recognize, honestly. I am not crazy into EBM and Industrial. I've pretty much just scratched the surface when it comes to that type of music. Generally, more electronic music is not my type of thing, but over the past few years, I've really started to open up to it, and certain bands, like especially like Aesthetic Perfection, I really, really like the sound of. I really like that like super aggressive sound. And then on Sunday, Covenant is playing, The Legendary Pink Dots, and Assemblage 23. After that, again, I don't recognize any of the names. <laughs> but I'm sure that it'll be a great time. So I am very much looking forward to that. And then I'm also looking forward to Wasteland Weekend. They haven't announced all of the bands that are playing for Wasteland Weekend yet, but I know for sure one of the bands that are playing is Sisters of the Black Moon, which is the band that I just saw tonight. Question number nine. What is your favorite band shirt? I have tons of band shirts. 
Basically, band shirts are like my casual wear. Say, if I have to work that day, I come home from work and I have to go somewhere, I'll just throw on a, a band shirt and some skinny jeans and my docks, and that's like my my normal outfit. Like, that's about as like normal as I get. Oh, my favorite one though. See, like, this is so hard because some of these band shirts I've literally had for at least 10 years. I've become very attached to them. They are my babies. When an article of clothing has survived so much and has been with you for so long, it's really hard to pick favorites. Oh well, I guess I gotta do it. So this shirt I have had since I was 13 and somehow it doesn't have any holes the fabric isn't like weakening anywhere. Nothing. It's fucking perfect. Because uh, normally with my band shirts, I cut them up and alter them. You can only find band shirts in men's sizes. And I have a very hourglass figure. So if I wear a regular men's t-shirt, it looks super boxy on me. I have to kind of take it in on the sides to fit my figure. But with this shirt, <laughs> It's actually a, a children's shirt that's like a, a youth medium or large or something. So it's actually tight enough to where it's like form fitting. And normally I cut off the collars to kind of make it like a low cut thing, but this shirt has a print on the front that I don't, I don't want to tamper with. And notice the color scheme. Number 10. What musician would you like to hang out with for a day? I'm not really even sure. I am generally afraid to meet people that I idolize because I'm afraid that they're not going to live up to my expectations. It's kind of the nature of the beast. Like with celebrities, you kind of put them on this pedestal. If you meet them and they don't they don't fulfill your every desire, basically. You're just kind of like, why did I like you again? But if I had to choose, if I were to hang out with a musician, probably David Bowie. I feel like he would have the most interesting stories to tell, and he would also have the most insight about the music business. Not only did he survive and thrive in such a cutthroat industry for decades, but he also helped launch other people's careers. Like if it weren't for him, we wouldn't know about certain artists. I think that's really amazing, especially as a musician. I would love to get some advice from him. Number 11. Who is one musician or group that you would like to see have a comeback? You know what? I honestly can't think of any artists that I would like to have a comeback. Any of the artists that I could think of off the top of my head are dead, which kind of makes a comeback impossible. <laughs> Number 12. What is one band or artist that you've never seen live that you would love to? Well, I really wanted to see David Bowie and Prince live at some point in my life, but I guess that's not gonna fucking happen now, is it? But other than that, there. <laughs> There are actually a lot of bands that I would love to see live. Pretty much all the, the major goth bands. I mean, because there, there are dozens of goth bands that I've seen live, but I haven't seen too many of the, like, classic ones. The only, like, OG goth bands that I've seen are 45 Brave and Community FK and Clan of Zymox and The Damned. Otherwise, you know, it's all like more modern bands. The, the list of bands that I want to see is virtually endless. If I have the opportunity to see any band that I am aware of, I will fucking take it. Unless I have, you know, some super compelling reason to not go. Number 13. Name four or more flawless albums. Ugh, flawless, huh? Some of these questions are really easy, and some are fucking doozies, man. Well, let me think about that for like an hour, and I'll get back to you. I've compiled a list of albums. 
after I post this, I'm probably gonna be like, fuck, I didn't include this one out. And, uh, oh well, I guess. Here's my current list, anyway. Pretty on the Inside by Hole. Uh, pornography by The Cure. Close One Sad Eye by Community FK. Incest Side by Nirvana. Autopsy by 45 Grey. Siamese Dream by The Smashing Pumpkins. First and Last and Always by Sisters of Mercy. Songs of Faith and Devotion by Depeche Mode. Up Your Alley by Joan Jack. And Scrap Metal by Civilized Society. And like I said, that list changes quite frequently. Question number 14. How many concerts have you been to total? I don't even know. I used to count when I was younger, uh, but then I quickly realized, hmm, this is gonna be quite a lot to count, man, because one of my favorite things is going to concerts. You literally have to be <laughs> counting every weekend, but if you would like to hear an embarrassing little tidbit, my very first concert was when I was 10 years old, and it was at the LA County Fair, and I saw Hoobastank. Yeah, who was saying? Found a reason for me. It was about as terrible as it sounds. I am almost 23 now, and ever since I was 18, I've pretty much gone to a show every weekend. You know, obviously there have been some circumstances where that hasn't happened, but almost every weekend I've seen a band play and sometimes multiple times a week, depending on people's touring schedules and whatnot. I'm always on the lookout. Like, I'm constantly on the internet, on bands in town, on Ticketmaster, all these different sites, seeing who's coming up soon and wherever, because yeah, I, I absolutely love concerts and I try to go to as many as I possibly can. I've attended probably several hundred concerts at this point. Number 15. Who have you seen the most live? The band that I have seen the most live by far is Sisters of the Black Moon. Like I said, we've seen them for years straight almost every time they perform, so that's a good, like, 20 or so times that we've seen them. The second band would be 45 Grave. I believe I've seen them about seven times at this point. And then after that is The Addicts. I have seen them three times now. The only other band that I've seen that many times is uh, Bell Tower Bats. They're a, a local LA band and I've seen them like five times now. Number 16. What is your favorite movie soundtrack? Queen of the Damned has a really good soundtrack. The Crow. Clueless. <laughs> no, but really. Number 17. What was your last musical phase before you wisened up? I never really had a phase that I grew out of or anything. It just kind of morphed into something else. Because I feel like I've always been very uh, darkly inclined, but not goth necessarily. And then as time went on, I just kind of started progressing more towards that arena of things. Other than being goth, I don't think I've ever been any other sort of stereotypical thing. I did like some emo bands back in the day, but I was never emo. You know, I didn't have coon tails. I didn't have huge teased hair at the time. I didn't wear skinny jeans or, you know, have like raccoon eyeliner or any of that. I wouldn't necessarily call that a phase of mine. This is who I've I've always been, and I've kind of just become more myself as I've gotten older, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> Number 18. What is your guilty pleasure that you hate to admit to liking? I am not a person that believes in guilty pleasures. I'm of the persuasion that uh, if you think what I like is stupid, <laughs> then go fuck yourself. I don't care. Hell yeah. 
I'm blasting Backstreet Boys in my car. I don't give a fuck. You'll you'll see me dressed like this, and you look over, and I'm like, I want it that way. Like that's just who I fucking am. I like all types of music. I like R&B, mostly 90s and early 2000s though. I like funk music. I like disco, uh, depending on on the year and the artist. I like soul music. I I like blues. I like jazz. I I like pop music. I like rap. I like country. Uh, I like like outlaw country though, not uh, like the popular country now. But I, I do love me some, you know, Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard, that sort of thing. I really like EBM and Industrial. I really like Shoegaze. I really like folk music. I really like Celtic music. I really like J-pop and K-pop. And, and that's what baffles me, is that so many, uh, particularly goths, feel that they can't listen to anything but goth music. And dude, that is the biggest fucking lie. Life would be so boring if all you could listen to was goth music. Goth came from punk. Punk came from rock. Rock is a very, very large umbrella. If you limit yourself to only listening to goth music, I feel sorry for you, man because you are missing out on a lot of quality music. It's a lot of music that inspired those goth artists that you're swearing to, okay? People have multiple influences. People like music of all varieties, and like, and that's what makes music so interesting, because you can pull from all these different inspirations, all these different influences, and create something that's truly special, truly unique to you. I don't understand why people want to limit themselves. There's so much out there to explore. There's so much out there to learn about. Don't confine yourself to a genre. Just don't fucking do it, man. If people give you shit for listening to other music, Fuck them. If you're a goth that ignores rock, then you're ignoring your roots, man. If you're a goth that ignores punk, you're ignoring your roots, man. Alright, there you have it. The music tag. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for joining me, and thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And if you have any particular videos that you would like to see, if you have any suggestions, whatever, you just want to talk to me, leave it down below. Motherfucker. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.